Welcome to Legally Speaking, a podcast from the Utah Attorney General's Office. Here, we will be discussing matters of policy and justice, cases that our office is taking on, hot topics in Utah and in the world, but of course, it will all be done <coughs> legally speaking. Hello and welcome to Legally Speaking, the podcast for the Utah Attorney General's Office. I'm Richard Pyatt and joining me today is Missy Larson, a previous Chief of Staff for the office and one of the creators that assisted in creating the Safe UT app, which is now in so many hands of so many teenagers around the state. We hope. We would hope because it is a safety first type app that uh, gives teenagers essentially an avenue to uh, report trouble for themselves, trouble within themselves, trouble with their friends, etc. So, Missy, tell me, where did the idea for an app like this come Really from? where it started, Rich, was um, I had literally been in the office one day, and um, there was, from the previous person that had worked here, there was one piece of paper on my desk, and it was a program out of Denver. So it really started, the idea started to germinate with the earlier administration, and um, but this piece of paper said safe to talk, and it was a um, technology that had been put together outside of Utah, actually in Colorado, after the horrible events that they had seen with school shootings. And this particular technology, or it wasn't even an app, I think, at the time. This was 2014, the very, very beginning of 2014. And this, and this technology was to help connect teenagers in Colorado or wherever this was implemented with the Attorney General's office within that state. And it was really to report any sort of crime that was coming into the state. But when we looked at it, and started, and so I picked it up and I talked to one of our great people here, one of the attorneys, Wade Faraway, who was very involved with the legislative process. And Wade and I started talking and he said, we need to talk to Senator um, Thatcher, Daniel Thatcher, because he and I were already talking about something like this and, um, and that's why that document is there. Okay. And so that's really what got it going. Okay. So what it is is a resource for young people, for elementary school kids, for high school kids, for college kids, for young adults, and for parents. And the way it works is that you can uh, enter the app, and then if there's any kind of specific trouble, I guess you can, you can pick your school here. Yep. And then um, if a child is feeling in crisis, if a child yeah. has witnessed something that's troubling, then this gives them an opportunity to to report it. That's, and it's, it seems so intuitive it. now. Yeah, it's not even just report it. It's also to seek help. So it's both functions. So that original one only had the one function. Right. But Utah doesn't do anything that you know anything that doesn't seem logical to really what the end crisis is. And the mm-hmm. end crisis was we saw an increase in teenage suicide, and that's where Senator Thatcher really, really started to feel and had some experiences in his own life where he said. I, that's what I want to hit with this. So the first year in the legislative session, it was really talking about how do we stop the crisis of mental health with suicide prevention. Mm -hmm. And then we said, well, if we're doing this already, let's talk about also how we bring in that safety feature. So it has both features in it. It has the ability for somebody to get in if they're in personal crisis to get a therapist at any time of the day, 24 seven, and or it has the ability for somebody to get into that app and anonymously report guns at school or drugs coming to school or some sort of uh, massive bullying. There's many different things that can be reported on that and it goes specifically to the school. And the interesting thing is that most young people have phones now. They're less likely to call 911 
than they are to get on their app and, re and report it that way. Is and that that's what, really, that, when we first started talking, the first thing we needed to do was get the right people at the table. So in that very first legislative session in 2014, we formed this, this Safety Crisis and Tip Line Commission. And that was really pulling in the Department of Health, the Department of Education, um, law enforcement, members of the legislature. Th you know, they, I chaired that, but the people at the table were really the experts. And it was really amazing to see, okay, when we, when we had one particular woman who had worked a lot with, the, with apps in um, Stand for Kind, she, she really said, we have the data that shows that these kids aren't calling, but mm -hmm. they will text and they are responding to apps. So that's really what led us down, and her name's Pam Hayes, and she was great in helping us really open our eyes in 2014 that kids were not gonna call. Right. How useful of a, of a tool was the Safe UT app during COVID, for example, when oh, so many teens were my gosh. struggling? Well, there were a couple things that we saw with the data. First of all, pre-COVID, the, the um, times that it would go up was right after school, and over the weekends in the middle of the night. And if you start to think about crisis and how the, our kids are living now, we used to be able to go home and get away from bullying, but the problem is they go home and they go into bullying. Right. Because you open up a phone and so much of the bullying is an online bullying. So it's social media. Yeah. And so, or something would have happened at school and they need help right after school. Mm -hmm. So you would see this peak. Now COVID hits, these kids are home and they're more intently looking at their computers and at their devices. And so you, you see different spikes that come about because of that. The last year, there was really an increase in usage. Mm -hmm. They're coming back to school. They're back among their peers right. because there was this little safety zone for some kids in that if they had holistic households to go home to and they had parents who were able to pay attention to them and go through processes they had and they have a good family situation, then they were able to find, you know, a little more a little more support mm -hmm. during those COVID years. There were many kids though that don't have those stable environments. And so they actually needed it more. So because they were online more, there were things happening there. So you see um, there, it was a, it was a little bit different tempo mm -hmm. during the COVID years. And now I think we're all realizing we're, we're in this PTSD a little bit right. coming out of COVID For where sure. people don't quite know to how to, how to deal with this new world. Mm -hmm. And Safe UT is so amazing because it's really free therapy. For, mm -hmm. for anyone, really. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's designed for these kids, but parents can use it, Yeah, kids who are worried about their friends. Are there statistics about how many people that it's, uh, how many lives it's touched, how oh, many yeah, families it's touched? It is amazing, and I don't have those numbers off the top of my head, but, but you can thousands. easily find those thousands. And, yeah. and it is amazing to me, even when you look at the data of thwarted, like, gun violence at schools, mm -hmm. you know, you, you realize these things are happening. We're not hearing right. about them right, right, because right. they're thwarted. And you, we hear about them here in this office, right. you know, when I was chief of staff and you hear about these things because our officers are going out to actually stop these things right. from happening. But, but beyond our office or beyond these agencies or police, you wouldn't hear about them. Yeah, right. I know. The absence of them makes us a little, um, well, there's, it's it's not necessarily news that it was a threat. It's a news if something happens. But I don't think people are realizing. If you talk to somebody in law enforcement, they'll tell you. But otherwise, you would never know, you wouldn't know. that this is very, very common. This happens all the time. Right. And there's a lot our officers are doing. And, and it makes me, I mean, I almost get more emotional about our officers when, when people talk to me about them because of what they've gone through emotionally over mm -hmm. the last few years, because they don't understand the hero status of these people, right. men and women who are willing to put their lives at stake every single day. Mm -hmm. And they're not paid extremely well. Yet, it's, it's something moving them from their heart to mm. be these watchdogs yeah. out for us. And, and yet, we sometimes treat them in ways that are 
that are, you know, it just breaks my heart sometimes. Yeah, and I, you know these people, so it's, yeah. you know, it's... It's, it, it's true, unfortunately. The other thing that strikes me about the creation of this app is how many resources uh, came together to form it. That's, it's really difficult to understand that if you have the Attorney General's Office working with DCFS, working with the University of Utah Hospitals, working with Intermountain Hospitals, and getting all these entities together. It was so magical. What a, I call what a it one of task my that is. biggest God moments, right? Like where I'm like, this does not just happen. Because if anybody knows working, I mean, anybody who's watching this has known what it takes to actually move a mountain to do something at this scale. You really have to have good intent at the table and you have to have people willing to not be there for their own you know for their own personal reasons but to be there for the greater good mm -hmm. and we had the most incredible table of organizations and people who really were there to save these kids like there wasn't really you know other we ran into that a little bit in that first legislative session in that <clears throat> We we're looking at a three-digit response, which it turned into, and that can be a whole mm -hmm. different thing with 988. But that started here as well that year in the legislative session. But let's stay to say UT today, and that process was miraculous to me because sitting around, you're exactly right. How it is so difficult to you've got. The Attorney General's Office, which is completely separate from these state organizations that report to the govern governor. And although people really want to work together, they're under-resourced, they don't have enough time. And so to overcome that under-resourcing and you know everybody's intent, and they came open-hearted wanting, we actually, during the process of doing this, had a, an amazing um, therapist that had been a therapist at um, the University of Utah Neuropsychiatric Institute, which is now Huntsman Mental Health. And um, he actually uh, completed suicide during the process oh. of us doing this. And it made me just want to go back and listen to everything he told us, even at a higher level of like, what was he trying to say around that table? Because he was hurting clearly. And, and it, it, it breaks my heart that he was hurting at that level and, yeah. and did not have the help that he needed. Yeah. That, I think everybody can relate to that. The, the thing is that when you encounter that, nobody really knows what to do. Right. But if the person is able to guide themselves through finding a resource in order to find help. The percentage of ideation yeah. is very, very high. And so if they're able to go onto an anonymous app, the only reason you would ever, ever be tracked, and you, when you go into that app, they will ask you to give you their your number. The only time that they will ever track you is if they think you're in self-harm or physical harm to somebody else. Mm -hmm. That is the only time. It, the same reason that that you know we want. It would be the reason you would want somebody to intervene. Right. But other than that, 100% anonymous. If you want to call and give a tip on somebody, that's not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, you can give it completely anonymous, and yeah. they won't track you. So did this? Did this? Uh, is there a cost associated with having the app and maintaining it? How, uh, that how was the that... other miracle. We started this like with. We had no idea how we were gonna fund this. We just knew it was so critical. And, and it was at the time in the state where we were being extremely frugal. The state wasn't in, you know, it was, it was in a place where we didn't know we'd get any funding. And so the very first year, um, Senator Thatcher really put everything he had on the table and said, I can maybe get almost 200,000, you know, just to get it developed. We had an amazing um, outside, organization that was willing to give us the app for free to test it out. And so we utilized this P3 for a little while and we realized the limitations of not owning the app. And so then we had to go into it and say, and, and Representative Steve Ellison was really the one who kept pushing it and saying, if we're going to have an app, we have to have one we can control. And John Gray at the University of Utah mm -hmm. put his personal time, he was doing um, a master's program, 
And he saw the need to build out SafeUT in the way that had quicker response time, that didn't have glitches, that when somebody called, they actually got to somebody, not because the technology was breaking. It had to be a clean technology. And so he spent, he put his master's aside. I can't remember if it was a master's or PhD, but he put that education aside. And he put in overnight hours, multiple times, unpaid mm -hmm. to get this built. And what a hero. I mean, yeah. there's so many heroes along the way in the building of this. And, and he was really the one who launched from the University of Utah, and then they picked up some of the development fees um, because of the health. And the reason we, we really went through this process is because University of Utah is a state organization. And so you could yeah. have state funding that mm -hmm. easily went to them by design through the legislature and wouldn't go through an RFP process because that was the state's organization. So there were many things that went into the thought processes of how this was launched. Many people stepped up as massive heroes, putting their own personal time yeah. into it. And, um, you know, and we have a very successful tool now that the state owns. It's owned through the University of Utah. And then we've got this great commission that continues to, yeah. to meet. There's a lot of hard work that continues to go yeah. on. Uh, just to maintain it. Are other states also catching on to this and using something similar that you're aware of? You know, we, we have offered it to other states. Now, obviously, they're going to need to put their own outside yeah. kind of, um, they're going to have to do, say, Colorado or, you know, whatever it is on the state. Well, they're going to have to do their own... Uh, Support. They're going to have to do their own, you know, shepherding of the of, of the various participants in there. Yeah, and it's is... it. And Utah's unique. Like I talked to a lot when I was in the chief of staff position, I would often meet with many different um, attorneys generals, chiefs, chiefs, and and Utah's very unique because we're or we are a collaborative solution finding state mm -hmm. and it makes us really push the envelope much quicker than a lot of other states in solutions and so other people have looked at it and wanted to use the platform but they really do have to put their own um, you know their own people in place for it. They have to have the provider network, and this, as we talk about 988, um, that's been forced them to have immediate support. Now there were also through federal legislation in previous years um, the suicide prevention mm -hmm. hotline that wasn't a three digit. Now it is a three digit, but it also came into place with, and we saw what you know was put out over the last few months with that that there, the states really have to be ready to respond to every mental health crisis the same way that they would be with physical crisis with 911, mm -hmm. with 988. Right. So that backs up how they're also doing a app for kids in that that same therapeutic network um, you know, can be used. So I don't know if other states have, have used it. We have offered it at a deep discount, you know, in the way of just technology build. And then, but they, but they have to put their own efforts into doing it. And I know other states are seeking solutions yeah. and, and looking at it. Well, well, sometimes getting all those, getting all those entities together, it's hard to get the, everyone together just to meet, to talk about it, let alone actually do something. So the, the magic of it was like, that <clears throat> year was that the legislature saw that. And so they, they legislated in a statewide commission. Showed some leadership. And showed some leadership in that. Yeah. And so, and I was chairing it, but those people were designed to be at that commission. And so it wasn't like it was this volunteer, like, oh, you can come if you want to. Right. Your organization has a seat as a, almost like a commission member that is a voting commission member and we need your input. Mm -hmm. And that has to go back to the legislature to report. So if you, you know, it all works together and clearly if you're going to want the state legislature to give you more money to do good things. You really need to do the things they're asking you to do right. as well. So, so there was a little external push on that, but yeah. a lot of good intent and a lot of heroes at that table. Yeah, it's it's really is an extraordinary app. If you haven't uh, checked it out, if your family hasn't had a chance to talk about it or view it, go on to your app store and look under Safe UT one word, and you can download it and and look at it and. 
find out whether it's useful to you. It's useful for all, for all ages, really. And it's something that is a unique resource to the people here in Utah. Every phone should have it. The other thing is, is if you want to see the statistics, they are public and they are on the University of Utah's Safe UT site. So if you just Google Safe UT, Safe UT, um, you can find the reports of yeah. how many. Yeah, it's all transparent. Yeah. All right, thank you, Missy. Thank thanks you. Thanks for creating Safe UT and thanks for coming in today. It's always good to see you. Thanks, Rich. And thanks for joining us on Legally Speaking today. I'm Richard Pye. We'll see you next time.